Hey there, it's Kenzie from Details to Enjoy, and today I'm going to be making the kits from our September and October size B subscription box. I'm going to start off by painting everything, so I need to sort everything into groups based on the color I'm painting them. On the solid insert, I'm going to be doing the color wash method, so I need some water, a paint sponge, and I'm going to be using the color Silky White by Bear. First, I need to rehydrate my sponge so it's nice and soft, I'm just going to do that by dipping it into the water. Then using my sponge, I'm going to get a few drops of water to add into the paint and I'll swirl that around with the sponge. Then I'm going to use the sponge to apply the paint to the insert in a circular motion. The goal of the color wash method is to have some of the texture of the MDF show through the paint. If your paint is too opaque, you may need to add some more water and if it's too transparent, you can add more paint. Then I'm gonna use the clean side of my sponge to blend out any harsh paint lines that I may have. On the shiplap insert, I'm going to be using a black paint and a foam brush. Before I start painting, I'm going to make sure that I have my tack handy to clean out the shiplap lines. Whenever I'm painting anything a solid color, I like to work in multiple thin coats. So I'm just getting my first coat on really quickly and I'm not worrying too much about if there's still MDF showing through. Once the first coat is done, I'm going to clean out all of the engraved lines using my tack. I'm gonna do this while the paint is still wet and I'll slide the tack through the line and then clean the excess paint off the tack before moving on. Once the first coat is dry, I can go in with a second coat, and again, I'm gonna make sure to remove any pulled up paint with my tack. Next, I'm going to be working on painting all of the flower pieces. For these two pieces, I'm going to be using my detail brush and the silky white paint. On all of these pieces, I'm making sure to have very little paint on my brush to prevent any paint from spilling over the edges. And if I do get any paint on the edges, I'm going to wipe it up with my finger. Next, I'm going to paint the leaves, and for this, I'm using Lucky Penny by Glidden. On any of the engraved pieces like this, you're going to do the same thing that you did on your shiplap insert and use your tack to clean out the lines while the paint is wet. The next color I'm going to be using is Copper Beach by Glidden. For each new color, I'm using a new clean foam brush. Next up is Russian Olive by Bear. Keep in mind that you can do this project in any colors you like and with any type of paint that you like. My next color is Amber Brew by Bear. You wanna make sure that you're also saving your foam brushes for any second coats or touch-ups that you need to do. And the final paint color I'm using is Dark Cherry Mocha by Glidden. You technically don't need to paint this larger solid flower piece because it's going to be layered underneath the other one, but I did just in case. And now, time to do a quick second coat on everything. For the top of the acorn and the broom handle, I'm going to be using BB Froche Dark Wax and a Wax Cloth. Using a corner of the wax cloth, I'm going to apply some of the wax to my piece and rub it in. Once I have the piece covered in wax, I'm going to use a clean spot of the rag to remove any excess. Now that everything is painted and dry, it's time to give everything a quick sand with the sanding blocks. To smooth out the finish, I'm going to use the sanding block flat against the top, and to add a little bit of distressing, I'm going to use the sanding block at about a 45 degree angle to remove some of the paint on the edge. To prevent mixing the colors, I'm using one side of each sponge for each color, and then once I've used both sides of the sponge, I'll switch to a new one. After smoothing out the top of my shiplap insert, I'm going to use one edge of my sponge to add some distressing in between the lines. This will wear down the grit of the sanding block pretty quickly, so you may need to switch sides or even use one of the other blocks. Then I did one final sand over the whole piece. Once you have everything sanded, you're gonna to wanna to clean up all of that sanding dust with a clean, dry paper towel. To assemble the broom, I'm going to start with one of the strings laying in front of me, going vertically, and then I'm going to grab the six pieces of rope and lay them the other way across the center of the string. 
Then I'm going to place my broom handle on top of that going the same direction as the rope and the notch in the broom handle should line up with the string. Then I'm going to tie a tight knot around the broom handle and the rope using that notch as a guide. Make sure to knot it twice so it's nice and tight. Once that is secure, we're going to unravel all of the ropes to make them four individual strands. You can unravel them from the bottom or you can place your finger in between the strands near the top and pull down to start to unravel them. Make sure you do all of the rope pieces and that nothing is still twisted together. Once everything is unraveled, you're going to take your other string piece and place the broom face down on top of it. You want the string to be just about where the end of the broom handle is. Then you're going to tie another tight knot here. Make sure the knot is sitting on top of the broom handle instead of going underneath of it. Be sure to check the placement of the string on the front of the broom, and if you need to move it up, be sure to do that before you tie a second knot to secure everything in place. Now we're going to wrap the copper around the broom twice and tie it in a knot on the back to make sure it stays in place. I just knotted this once instead of twice to make sure that it wasn't too bulky. Once it is secure, trim off any excess copper with some scissors. To determine the final length of the broom, I placed it onto my insert, and I decided that mine was just a little bit too long, so I trimmed off the excess with scissors. To assemble the felt rose, I'm going to start on the outside of the spiral and roll the flower up on itself. As you roll, the petals will naturally start to lay a little bit flatter. Once we reach the end of the spiral, we're going to use a dab of hot glue to hold it all together. Then using another dab of hot glue, we're going to attach the felt leaf. Now it's time to start putting everything together. So I'm going to use a dab of hot glue to attach the felt flower just below the copper wrap on my broom and then I'm going to attach the broom to my insert. To do this, I'm going to start by taking off the protective layer of the peel and stick backing. Then I'm going to add a tiny dab of hot glue to the top of the handle and a larger one at the top of where the broom bristles are. Since there's a little bit of extra bulk to this piece, these hot glue dabs are going to help hold everything in place on the insert. Straighten out the bristles and this insert is done. Next, we're going to assemble our autumn floral kit, starting by centering the template on our insert. Hold it in place with a few pieces of washi tape. Start off by placing the sunflower in the lower left, making sure that the petals match up with the template. You can either peel and stick as you go or lay it all out first to make sure that you have the placement correct. Next, I'm going to place the solid version of the other large flower. Once these two flowers are in place, everything else should fit nicely around them. Then I'm going to place the large flower with the hole cut out, making sure that the petals all line up perfectly. You shouldn't have to force any pieces together. If it's not fitting quite right, try rotating it and trying again. Once everything is placed, you can remove the template. If you create your own versions of these kits, we'd love to see them, so be sure to share them on social media and tag us. We're Details to Enjoy on Instagram and Facebook.